What's up, everybody? It's Austin here with MCAT Habitat, coming to y'all with the first content video ever. So, uh, as said, we're following AMC's official MCAT content outline one by one for that five, two, eight. So, um, be sure to get this PDF. I'm going to link it in the description below. Some people put it all together nice and organized, all the things we need to know off of AMC's official content list. So, we're starting today with number one. Absolute configuration at the upper position. If you don't watch anything else, the bottom line is smash that subscribe button and change this absolute configuration from the unsubscribed to the subscribed. So here we go. Enter in, y'all, and comment down below on audio. I need to know how this sounds, how long these videos should be. Help me out to make better videos for y'all. So here we go. The spatial arrangement of atoms or groups in a chemical compound it's what we are talking about when we talk about absolute configuration. And this is going to be uh, these groups arranged around this chiral carbon atom. And it's going to be called our alpha carbon, alpha position. And why is it called the alpha? Because our alpha carbon is always directly attached to the carbon of the carbonyl group. Here's our carbonyl group, the C double bond O. The carbon directly attached is the alpha carbon and we see that here we have an alpha amino acid and a beta amino acid what's the difference we'll find our alpha carbon and our carbonyl group and that so we have our carbon of the carbonyl group the carbon connected to that's our alpha and then the carbon two carbons away from this carbon is our beta carbon and we see that over here as well and any questions on any of this you can drop them down below so I can try to answer them or someone else can answer them. Um, so why are these called alpha and beta amino acids? Well, the, you have to look at the amino group, the NH3. And if the amino group is connected to an alpha carbon, like over here, it's an alpha amino acid. If it's connected to the beta carbon, then it's called the beta amino acid. And we're going to be working with alpha amino acids. That's what we find in our body and in nature mostly. There is a beta alanine. But other than that, every other amino acid we find is alpha, and that's what we're going to find in the MCAT. So just, we're going to talk about alpha now. So alpha amino acids, alpha carbon, we always see this alpha carbon connected to this carbonyl carbon. It's also going to be directly connected to the amino group, which is why it's always going to be an alpha amino acid we will be talking about, just like we saw right here, directly connected to the amino group. Not over here, where it's way off here. So there's 20 of these amino acids. All of them follow the rule except glycine doesn't like to stay in the rules. Glycine is kind of on its own. Why? Because glycine is not chiral. It doesn't have four different atoms or groups attached. Thus it has no enantiomer, no serochemistry, no configuration of R or S or D or L, and no optical activity, which we will get into those three things, R, S, D, O, optical activity. So we see its R group is H. It already has an H, so that means it has two H's on it out of its four groups. So it is an achiral molecule, achiral amino acid. No chirality there. Every other amino acid will be chiral. So practical stuff, absolute configuration. What kind of configurations are we talking about? R and S, D and L, and plus or minus, also referred to as D for plus or L for minus. So R and S is the arrangement of atoms or groups around the chiral carbon. D and L is what we use to label enantiomers. And plus or minus, we use that notation for optical activity. So let's start off with R and S. So R and S is determined by the arrangement of these priority groups when approaching the alpha carbon from the lowest priority group. So what's this mean? We're going to look at that. Before we look into that, all amino acids, this is really important, have S stereochemistry besides cysteine, which is R stereochemistry. So we're going to look at cysteine because it's an oddball, just like glycine has its little um, exception to the rule. Cysteine also has an exception to this rule. So cysteine and methionine. He says cysteine likes to be a little different, which has R. Every other amino acid will have S. So, um, how are we going to do this? We look at the Kahn-Engel prelog priority rules. Big name, simple idea. 
We just are going to rank the atoms connected to the chiral carbon in order from biggest to smallest. Okay, so S, O, N, C, H, those are some common ones we'll see. You can use this larger group. But just look at the periodic table. You know, we see S bigger than O, bigger than N, bigger than C, bigger than B, bigger than H. So H has our lowest priority. Iodine up here would have the highest priority of anything. We don't see it too often, but we might come across iodine. So we find our alpha carbon connected to the carbonyl carbon. And we found that. And then we find the four groups by which one has highest priority? Well, nitrogen. Okay. Why nitrogen? Because nitrogen is bigger than carbon and it's bigger than hydrogen. And that's our only other two options. Like carbon, carbon, hydrogen. Carbon, a carbon, and a hydrogen. And so nitrogen gets number one. Number two is going to one of the two carbons. Which one? Where over here it goes to the carbon with the sulfur. Because sulfur is bigger than oxygen, okay? If you look on the table, sulfur is bigger than oxygen. So that gets to number two. This one here, you have a carbon with a carbon connected or a carbon with an oxygen connected. Oxygen is bigger than carbon, higher priority. So that carbon will get number two right here. Then number three will go to carbon right here, carbon right here, because the fourth option is just hydrogen, which has lowest priority, lowest mass, so that will be number four. Now we just draw the arrows going clockwise, going counterclockwise, and we know if it's going to the right, the arrow, if it's going clockwise, it's R. If it's going to the left, counterclockwise, it's S. Okay, now it depends on where this H is. This H is on a dashed line. So it's all good, but there are examples where the H is not on the dashed line. It's on just a straight line or a wedge. And then we have some different issues we will talk about in a future video. Also, Organic Chemistry Tutor has great videos on that. Check them out too. Okay, DNL. This is our second configuration we're going to be talking about. Um, it's most commonly used for amino acids, and it's centered around naming the stereoisomers of amino acids, stereoisomers. So, we need to know all amino acids found in us are going to be L-amino acids, and all sugars found in us will be D-sugars. So, same properties, right, but different functionality. These uh, L and D, the functionality is different. So, um, D-sugar works good, functions good with our cells. L-sugar, L-glucose, um, doesn't work good with our cells. So, that's why we have these sugars and L-amino acids. Okay, we use Fisher projections to determine notation. So, all sugars that we have in our cells are going to be D. So, we have a D-glucose, an L-glucose. D-glucose, that OH on the bottom, that second carbon, carbon 1, carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Glucose is 6 carbons. You number them like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, this second carbon, you look at the OH, it's on the right, it's a D. The OH is on the left, it's an L, left like L. Um, but if you're looking at amino acids, we're going to look at the amino groups instead of the hydroxyl groups or the alcohol group. So the amino groups, if it's on the left, it's an L. If it's on the right, same thing, it's a D. Um, and all amino acids will be L minus glycine, which isn't chiral, so it's neither D or L. Um, so we'll find L alanine in our cells. Um, so, sugars, oh yeah, there's an error on the slide. If y'all can find it, comment it down below. I will tell you, I'll give you a big hint, it's right down here. There's an error on the slide. This one's correct. This is a D-glyceraldehyde, the OH is on the right. This is an L-glyceraldehyde, the OH is on the left of the second carbon. Carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 1, carbon 2. But on this bottom, we got these mixed up, so... Uh, don't ask why, but we got it mixed up. Okay, lastly, optical activity, plus or minus, you know, D or L. The D for dextrorotatory, the L for levorotatory, you know, go, uh, rotating the light towards the right or to the left. Um, so every single amino acid, except for glycine, uh, is chiral. And if it's chiral, it has optical activity. And we can see why glycine is not chiral. It has two H's on it. Um, and if it's chiral, it 
uh, enantiomers are chiral, so enantiomers will rotate plane polarized light and will be optically active. Meso compounds or any other non chiral compound is not optically active and they don't rotate the light. So RNS compounds will have different, I mean, opposite rotations. Um, you know, you send the light through this filter, it becomes polarized, and then it goes through the solution of amino acids, and that can rotate the light to the left or to the right, depending on the solution. If it has equal amounts of, an, of two enantiomers, equal amounts of L or D or R and S, then it's going to be no net rotation. Um, so, question, which of the following compounds are not optically active? So, as said, chiral compounds are opt optically active. So, basically, we're looking for the one that is not chiral. Meso compounds are not optically active. So, which one is achiral? We'll, we'll pick the top two, because one of these is not chiral. And to do this, we do the, we're going to use the R and S as we start off with. So, this, we have two uh, chiral carbons here, two chiral carbons here, four different groups attached to each of these carbons. And um, any questions on this, comment down below. We'll do a follow-up video. So to have, uh, we got a number the priority, right? So this chiral carbon, uh, BR is going to be our number one attached to it. Number two will be this C because it's connected to a BR while wow, this C is only connected to an H. BR has a bigger mass than H, so it has more priority. And third priority will be this C, because it has more priority than the fourth, which will be hydrogen, which is the smallest atom, right? So you draw your arrow. It's going counterclockwise, but there's a problem here. It's not going to be S, it's going to be R, because this H right here is on a wedge. Look at the Fisher projection. If it's on the horizontal line, it's a wedge. It's on the vertical, it's a dash. You always want your H's on the dash or else you're going to have to flip your answer choice. So your answer choice is counterclockwise. We're going to have to flip it to clockwise and make it R. The bottom one, your H is actually on the vertical line. So it's going to be good. Um, BR is going to be first priority, then this carbon with this BR, and this carbon with this H. Then the H by itself is fourth priority. Um, so we're going clockwise, R, and we're going to keep it clockwise because this H is on the dashed line. So we're all good, and we can call this R. Um, so, yeah, if it's on the dash, we know it's going backwards out of the plane of the page. If it's on a wedge, it's coming into the page, right? Um, so we have R and R uh, for this... Uh, configuration, which means that it is a chiral compound and it is optically active. Now this one here, start off with this chiral center. CL has highest priority of these. Um, then this carbon with this CL, it's more priority than this carbon with an H. Carbon with the H is third, and this H is going to be fourth. So we're going to be drawing this arrow this way. One, two, three, four. So it's going clockwise, but again, the H is on the wedge, so we need to flip it from R, which it looks like R, but we're going to flip it to an S because this H is on the wedge instead of the dash. Now on this chiral carbon here, the chlorine gets number one priority. Number two priority goes up to this uh, carbon connected to this chlorine. And number three goes to this carbon connected to just hydrogen. Number four will be this hydrogen, which is on the wedge. I mean, not the wedge, the dash. Because this hydrogen is on the dash, we don't need to do anything. We draw our arrow. One, two, three is going clockwise. It's going towards the right. So it's going to be an R. So arrow is going clockwise to the right, so it's R. We don't have to swap it because the H is already on the dash line at the vertical. It's on the vertical line here, which is always dashed on Fisher projections. So we have... An S and an R. So we know it is not optically active. And S and R cancel out, so it's not chiral. It's not a chiral molecule. It does have two chiral centers. But the molecule is a chiral. It's not optically active. And these cancel each other out. And everything else, if you check them, will be R. And that makes all these other three 
optically active, and they are chiral molecules. Lastly, question. The amino acids in hemoglobin or any protein have which of the following configurations, L, S, R, or D? So the answer is going to be L. Why? Because all amino acids have L configuration, right? Besides glycine, of course. Now, if the question said the sugars in our body or cells uniformly have which configuration, sugars have D in our body, okay? Amino acids like to be in the L configuration. Now, sugars and amino acids both can have R or S depending on the arrangement of atoms about their chiral centers, right? Um, so bottom line, again, absolutely smash the subscribe button. Change that configuration from unsubscribe to subscribe to help me out so I can keep making these videos. Comment below how I can make these better. And also, amino acids and peptides, they have configurations, absolute configurations, at the alpha position and at other positions as well. But whether they are R, S, L, D, plus, or minus, they don't really relate to each other. You can have an R, which is a D, which is a minus, or an S, that's a D, that's a minus. It doesn't relate. But each one of these things tells us something unique about a molecule, especially how the molecule functions in nature. And uh, keep up the daily domination. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. We're out.